Good morning, and what a wonderful day it is, and it will continue to be. You know why? Because you have the word of the Lord to hold on to. So welcome to Monday Morning Devotions. Uh, the thought I want to leave with you this morning is, someone needs to hear your story. Remember on this day, God goes before you. He will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. This week I was thinking of the power of a testimony and how important it is for us to testify of the goodness of God and his, faithful to, his faithfulness to us every time the opportunity presents itself. In 1 Chronicles 16 and 8, it says, Give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Again, someone needs to hear your story. I like the way the message reads for conversation, and it says, Thank God, call out his name, Tell the whole world who he is and what he's done. Sing to him. Play songs for him. Broadcast all his wonders. Revel in his holy name. God seekers, be jubilant. Study God and his strength. Seek his presence day and night. Our last devotion, I talked about my story of Popeye's chicken, and it relates to the ministry of angels. And I told you to tune in for the grocery store miracle. Never underestimate the power of a testimony. A testimony that is given to honor God, his goodness and his faithfulness is anchored in a conviction that an all-knowing God is in command of his work. He will not fail and he'll always keep his promises. So the next teaching session back then, I told you in the early 80s on the ministry of angels, I shared my praise report one night at Popeye's Chicken and the briefcase in that series. That same week, one of our mothers who has gone on to be with the Lord was present for that teaching. She rode the bus everywhere she went. If you'd see her walking in the heat of the summer, uh, off her ride, she would say, no thanks, the bus is my ministry, it's my mission field. She had gone to the grocery store that day. Bill fell out of her purse, had just cashed her check for the month, and somehow laid her bowl with all the money in it on top of some produce in the produce section of the grocery store. She leaves the store on a Friday evening, gets home about an hour later, discover she doesn't have a bill fold, and it has all of her cash for the month that she needs in it. She then remembers the last time she had it was in the produce section when she took it out for whatever reason. She later testified that she felt a calmness come over her as she said, you will give your angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways. She said, if you did it for Pastor Jack, that's what they called me back then, she said, you can do it for me. She leaves home, goes to the bus stop to catch the bus to go back to the grocery store. She said she went in peace. She said, because God, you go before me. With probably another 45 minutes an hour ride, walks to the store from where her stop was, goes directly to the produce section where she remembers me. This is on a Friday evening, almost two hours later, and she said with all the people around shopping, picking out produce, there her billfold was on top of the produce where she left it with all of her money in it. She said, Holy Spirit said to her, we commissioned an angel to cover it until you could get back to get it. Practice living like God has got you. Tell your story of the many times and many situations in your life where God's track record came to the forefront that you knew that it was God that had you. When you practice living like God has got you, it creates in your life an unshakable foundation of a secure, meaningful life where peace, confidence, happiness, and joy, and love can flourish. So your testimony, my friend, is a powerful tool in sharing what God has done and is continuing to do in your life. Always know and call to remembrance when needed the fact that God has you in the palm of his hand. Glory to God. The Bible talks about God's holding us in his hands throughout the Old Testament and New Testament. It is a language used to convey that we're held securely by the grip of God's grace. In Psalms 139 and 10, David describes that God will always be present to lead and hold us. Isaiah 49 and 16 says that we have been engraved in the palm of his hands, never forgetting us and leading us. 
In John chapter 10, verse 27 through 30, Jesus uses the language of sheep to describe God's grip on our life. Just know God's got a grip on you. I want to say that again. God's got a grip on you. And the word of the Lord says, God is my shepherd. I am his little lamb. He feeds me. He guides me. He looks after me. I have everything I need. Inside my heart is very quiet, as quiet as lying still in soft green grass and a meadow by a little stream. Even when I walk through the dark, scary, and lonely places, I won't be afraid because my shepherd knows where I am. He is here with me. He keeps me safe. He rescues me. He makes me strong and brave. He's getting wonderful things ready for me, especially for me. Everything I ever dreamed of, he fills my heart so full of happiness, I can't hold it all inside. Wherever I go, I know God's never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever, love will go to. Oh my God, always and forever, love will go to, no matter what life has thrown at you, or is throwing at you, or will throw at you, just know you're held in the palm of God's hand. Isn't that amazing? That means you can trust that God is leading you into his holiness to become more like him toward your good and for his glory. The key is remembering this no matter what gets thrown at you. Live like God has got you. Four ways to remind yourself that God has got you and want to lead with you. Immerse rather than remind. There's no doubt some days life is difficult. We live in a fallen world that's in need of God minute by minute, hour by hour for his salvation and restoration. Rather than reminding ourselves that we are held in the grip of his grace when life gets weary we're better off immersing ourselves in the truth daily just immerse yourself in it sit under the word sit under good teaching find a promise for your situation and then rest in that promise number two sing the powerful the power of song is incredible song naturally recalls therefore we should utilize the simple tool of song in order to help us remind that God has got us. Even now, singing those old songs here lately is giving me strength on this journey that I'm on right now. One thing I sang over and over, he's never left me alone. He's never left me alone. By night and by day, he's been with me all the way. He has never left me alone. Listen to songs, sing songs that remind you of his faithfulness and his goodness. The third thing, look for evidence of his grace. Every morning you awake and you see the beauty of the window, the sun coming through it, his grace is being displayed. In the breakfast you eat, the taste of food, the smell of fresh air, your ability to be mobile one day after another, to go to and fro, the beauty of the sun rising and the sun setting. Everything around you today is evidence that he is holding us. He's got you, he's got me. Despite of your individual circumstances, we're facing, we're all facing something today. I have some major things I'm facing right now, this very moment as I'm speaking to you, but I'm telling myself, God has a track record. He keeps his promise and I know he's got me. So when grief strikes and hope is dim, Remind yourself and look for evidence of his grace. Even if it's dark and scary, you're in a lonely place, he's still there with you. You feel his grip, you feel his hand, you feel his presence as even more evidence that he's got you. So even if the good shepherd is leading you through a dark, scary, lonely place, he's still there with you. Ask him to show you where and praise him for the evidence of the grip of his grace. And lastly, surround yourself with community. God did not create us to live our lives alone. He is a communal God who desires us to be in community with himself and with others. So this means that reminding doesn't always come from ourselves. Instead, join a life group. Build a relationship with people who seek to love God and love others. Initiate friendship. Show yourself friendly. Reach out when you need help. Allow the body of Christ to point you to the God that holds you in the palm of his hand. His grip on your life changes everything. And the good news is, he's never, ever going to let you go. So my friend today, live today like God has got you. So if this resonates with you this morning, pay it forward. Share with a friend, share with a loved one. And again, I'll see you next week for another devotion for the conclusion of this series. Reduce your stress level. Until them, say to yourself today, all day of need be, God has got you.